adults on the line 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days out of the year. Not that I have to worry about that because I'm the greatest ever. These videos are not for children. If you are a children, then piss off. Never mind the face paint, I just got done whipping some ass in the ring. But this is the War King, and you're watching the reviews. Hey there, it's me, your least favorite YouTuber, V Infuso. And today I'm here to pay tribute to one of my all time favorite wrestlers during the Attitude Era. No, I'm not talking about Stone Cold, or The Rock, or Triple H, or Kane, The Undertaker, Shawn Michaels, or of course, Savio Vega. I'm talking about Crash Holly. Now, this may sound like a joke, but I assure you it's not. I was legitimately a huge Crash Holly mark growing up. And you can go back and tell OSW that I will take him in as my own. He can join my boy stable. Sit him right over there next to X-Pac and Dean Malenko. Our story starts with a man by the name of Sparky Plug. Thurman. Sparky Plug. Bob Holly was perpetually stuck in the mid-card, and in the low end of the mid-card at that. Like, he, he wasn't even a mid-mid-card worker. After a short period of time as Thurman, luckily he just became Spark Plug Bob Holly, which is better. But, you know, not, not, not too much better. Eventually his luck would change when the WWF ushered in the Hardcore Division. Primarily competing for that belt, he was dubbed Hardcore Holly. Holly went from a camptastic afterthought to a take-no-bullshit, kick-your-ass-and-forget-your-name tough guy. The success of the Hardcore Holly character would lead to the creation of a little cousin in Crash Holly. Crash was a lot like his older cousin, just, you know, uh, condensed, like, like, like kind of like a, a miniature version. Like, it was, it was a real Dr. Evil mini-me situation going on here. And although he was a shorter man, he had a much, much larger personality. The Crash Holly character was goofy and over-the-top ridiculous, but what really sold the gimmick to me was how serious Michael Lockwood would make the character. Like, he never came off as a character. Even at his silliest, it seemed like he believed the words that he would say. And he would he would stand by the actions that he would do. Actions that he would do? Is that? No, oh, I don't give a fuck. You know, he was very much like Kurt Angle in that sense. Um, and only in that sense. In no other way is he, is he like Kurt Angle. But for, for this one description, he was believable in his comedic stylings, I guess you could say. I mean, who else could cut a promo looking up at Spike Dudley and say, short people make me sick? Spike, short people like you make me sick. That's, come on, that's, that's amazing. Shortly after his debut, he'd start carrying a scale with him on his way to the ring, weighing himself each time and claiming that he was a super heavyweight, ranging in the 400 pound plus category. So yeah, it... The, the character w w was, you know, meant for laughs, but <laughs> goddamn did he get them. When it came to Crash and Hardcore, despite the blood that was shared in storyline, they weren't as connected in terms of a bond. The Holly Cousins were constantly at war with everyone around them, including themselves. While they continued to compete in the Hardcore division, both trying to become champion, they also teamed together in an effort to win the tag team titles. And eventually, they would. Shockingly beating the team of The Rock and Mankind, the Rock and Saw connection for their WWF Tag Team Championships. Later, a third cousin in Molly Holly would be added to the group. And what I loved about these three together is that there was definitely an authentic dynamic and energy between all of them. You know, they, 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 they came off as legitimate. You could buy them as a family. The Holly family kind of operated off a form of hierarchy, with Hardcore being the top branch of that family tree, and Crash being like the second in command, taking Holly's abuse, but being able to join Hardcore in mocking and dismissing Molly. Crash would eventually manage to capture the Hardcore title, establishing the 24-7 rule, meaning he'd defend this title anywhere, anytime, against anybody, wrestling ring or not. Why he'd want to do this is, is beyond me. It just really makes it a harder task, if not an impossible one, to achieve. But goddamn, definitely made for good TV. The title was very similar to the current 24-7 championship today. Almost identical, except uh, sometimes with less weapons. The 24-7 title, not the, hard, the hardcore title. I what can't be, and shouldn't be, understated is that Crash was the star of this division at the time. 
Amongst being a part of the on-screen reshaping of the belt and how it was won, he also took part in some of the best and funniest segments on the program. Defending his title in the ring, at carnivals, at malls, in hotels, everywhere you can imagine, and in some places you would never think of. Crash became nicknamed the Houdini of Hardcore for how he'd managed to lose the belt, but win it back at the end of each segment and then completely disappear. When all was said and done, Crash became a 22-time Hardcore Champion. This was absolutely the highlight of his career. And whenever I personally think of the Hardcore Championship, I know a lot of people go to Mick Foley, they go to Mankind because he was the first holder of the belt. But personally, I, I think of Crash Holly. Sorry, Mick, but I've always said being the best is better than being the first. Crash Holly was to the Hardcore division as to what today's R-Truth is to the 24-7 division. I find his whole winning, losing, and always chasing the belt very reminiscent of this time period, and it's not in a bad way at all. As a matter of fact, I would even say they got the right guy for the job to do it. Holly would also have some brief runs with the European Championship and the Light Heavyweight Championship, but, like I said, they were brief, and they were also not so memorable. Crash would serve as the APA's janitor from time to time, and eventually would become Matt Hardy's second follower in his Mattitude program. Just behind Shannon Moore, which is... Not something anybody at any point in their career would ever want to say, I am just behind Shannon Moore. It's not, it's not a compliment. Sorry, Shannon. And hey, Crash excelled with what they gave him. He was still funny, but it was clear that Holly was falling down the card and falling fast. Crash's career unfortunately crashed shortly thereafter, as he would be released from the WWE in 2003 and would sadly pass away later that year. Crash Holly was a great performer and should be remembered for his quirky actions and backstage segments. His matches weren't bad at all. He definitely knew what he was doing in the ring. He was always entertaining to watch, but there's some people in the world of wrestling who will be less remembered for their wrestling prowess, whether it be there or not, and more remembered for their character and how they were able to excel at it. You know, uh, the thing I'll remember the most about the APA is seeing them backstage behind a, a singular door in the middle of nowhere drinking beers. The thing I'll remember the most about Too Cool is them dancing before and after every performance. And while Goldust is an amazing worker, I'll remember him more for rubbing himself erotically than anything else. I mean, how many, how many boogeyman matches do you really remember? How many, how many times did you say, man, that, that, was, that was a classic, I am never going to forget? Probably never. But I guarantee you, you will go to your deathbed remembering that man shoving worms down somebody's throat. I know the people who ate those worms well. Anyway, my, my point is, in the same context, you'll remember Crash Holly for defending his championship in the most childish of ways. I know I will. So with that being said, I want to thank J.J. Toehill Rogers. I hope I said your name right, but you didn't really give me a great pronunciation of it. So if I'm wrong, then then you, you are equally at fault and we have to deal with this together. I want to thank him for being a longtime patron and requesting this video. I'm sorry it took so long, but I just wanted to make sure I did things right. And in order for me to end this the way that it should, in order for me to do this right, I can think of no other way than like this. What's with these holes?
And that was V Infuso. Just remember, if you're not tuning in, then you're missing out. So, if you like the words that came out of his mouth hole, and you too would like to become a V-generate, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, nerds! And if you're not joining the fun, you're in for one bad day. And you know what they say about having one bad day. <laughs> Catch him next time. Same bad time. Same bad channel.